Hello dear friends, welcome to Shiksha Mantra and today in Shiksha Mantra we have a very very interesting discussion. Yes dear friends, as you know it's about English grammar because uh, in my channel we discuss about English grammar and different tricks and uh, tips about it. So verbs and tenses. You learn it uh, quite frequently and you know how important they are. That's why most of the time you don't forget to learn verbs and tenses. But the problem is there is something which are related to the verbs which are equally essential but we don't put sufficient focus to learn them. So today we have chosen such a topic which is really very very essential for your learning of English grammar and obviously for the skill that you want to acquire in it and the topic as it's already there and uh, you have already read it, it's verbs of incomplete predications. Yes dear friends, when we talk of verbs of incomplete predications, we must remember another point that's, that's very essential. When you are learning verbs, you have to learn objects and that's our effort today. But before we start, let me tell you one thing. It's, it's really very essential to stay with us by subscribing our channel and obviously with the bell icon pressed so that you get every notification. So let's uh, begin our discussion. Yes, dear friends, verbs of incomplete predications and objects, they are very, very essential. But why are they so essential? This is a point that uh, we are going to learn here. When we talk of verbs, sometimes they get an object. Object is uh, a very essential part for our sentences. But most of the time, they don't get an object. So there what they get, there they get a complement. Because the verbs are really, they are very elusive. It's really a very elusive parts of speech that I say. Why elusive? The same verb. Sometimes they are used as transitive, sometimes as intransitive, sometimes they accept objects, sometimes they don't and sometimes without something they don't mean anything. Yes, dear friends, without something they don't mean anything. So, so very different faces they make. They have so very different uh, figures. You have to find them out in so very disguised conditions and they are really really very much very much disguised they are very much elusive so if you learn that uh, there's a, a verb that gets an object so when the verb gets an object it becomes transitive and when there's no object it becomes intransitive but that's not everything. Beside this, you have to learn how many types of sentences, how different types of sentences, sentences, sentences we get when we are dealing with intransitive verbs. Yes, dear friends, you know copulative verbs. We have the uh, discussion of copulative verbs here in this channel. And today, we are here to discuss verbs of incomplete predications. So what are the verbs of incomplete predications? How they do 
and uh, what are the most important things that we have to learn about them. Let's uh, have a discussion here. So first we have said that an intransitive verb they do not take an object. Intransitive verbs they do not take an object. We know it. So yes, uh, I have uh, given two examples. One is birds fly. So birds that's the subject and fly that's the verb. But is there any object? The question is, is there any object? The answer is very obvious and you know it that there is no object for this sentence. So when there is no object, this is obviously an intransitive verb. Now you will say, sir, I know it. Why are you repeating? The point is there. That's why at the very beginning I have told you that intransitive verbs are really very elusive. Just have a look at the second sentence, fire burns. Here also the verb doesn't have an object. But without the object, the sense of the sentence is 100% clear. There is no ambiguity in this sentence. You can understand what the sentence speaks without an object. That means sometimes with this construction, an intransitive verb is sufficient to answer but sometimes not all the times that's why we have to put the discussion of intransitive verb without object here there lies the difference why we are after the discussion of verbs of incomplete predication it's because this intransitive verb without an object it's sufficient to speak about the senses but where the problem appears yes dear friends this is the position for from where actually the problem starts so some intransitive verbs there's only some intransitive verbs we are not talking about all intransitive verbs only some intransitive verbs they require a word or a phrase to complete the predicate and make a sense of the sentence and such sentences where without a word or a phrase the verb the intransitive verb is unable to complete the predicate predicate part of the sentence to complete uh, to make a sense with the sentence these verbs are called verbs of incomplete predications they fail to complete the predicate. That's why they are verbs of incomplete predications. But how? Yes, dear friends, we have some examples here. The earth is round. The earth subject is verb and round and you know it's not object. It's an adjective. So what happens? Why we are saying that these verbs of incomplete predications, they cannot make sense, just do this. Now what happens? The earth is. Can you make any sense from here? The earth is. Is there any sense? Obviously, there is no sense with this sentence. Why? Because the predicate part isn't complete. The verb fails to complete the predicate. The auth subject is and then there would be series of question marks. What, what, what? We don't know. So the verbs of incomplete predications, they fail to complete their sense without a support of a word or a phrase. So here, if we continue with this, the earth is round. Now, this, this information, this word actually makes this sentence complete. And the same thing happens with the milk turned sour. The verb, now don't uh, use sour. The milk turned, turned what? There is no answer. The predicate is incomplete. So, this is verb of incomplete predications and now you need a support of this word shower to complete the sense of the sentence, to complete the sense of the predicate, to make a sense with this sentence and he became a monk. 
he became became what a monk so this phrase is required the night grew dark the night grew what there's no answer without this the night grew grew what there's no sense for the sentence but it's intransitive verb why because these are not objects now if you want to learn how to find out the objects whether they're objects or not you have to again go to that particular video it's in the i button above so from there you can learn it how to find out whether they are object or not but the question is if these informations round monk shower dark if these are not the objects then what are they what do we call them in english grammar so that's the question and now would we'll learn what we call them and what's their identity so let's learn it the word or words that require to complete the sense of the predicate that is to complete the sense of the verbs of incomplete predications they are called complement yes dear friends we call them complement of the verb so he became a monk this this uh, information a monk it completes the sense of the verb that's why it's a complement the night grew dark this information dark without it the sense of the verb is not complete so it helps the verb to complete its sense that's why it's also complement of the verb so so far we have learned verbs of incomplete predication so why they are essential what happens with intransitive verbs and how the intransitive verbs and verbs of incomplete predications they are not the same all the verbs of incomplete predications are intransitive verbs but all intransitive verbs are not the verbs of incomplete predications and for the verbs of incomplete predications we use complement we have also learned what are complement but the complements they are also of two types so now we have to learn what are the different types of complements just have a look at the sentence first shushi is a writer shushi is a writer this is the verb so this complement writer it's actually completing the description of the verb sorry the description of the subject so it's saying something about the subject the same thing happens here as well this house is too late so this complement is talking something about the subject so the complement has a relation not with the verb but with the subject that's why they are called the subject complement yes dear friends this is the first type of complements they are telling us something about subject so we call them subject complement now what is the second types of complement here in this sentence the teacher appointed charles monitor just just ask uh, the verb the teacher what there's no answer the teacher appointed whom charles so this is an object the teacher appointed whom charles so this is the object but without this information the teacher appointed charles it's incomplete the teacher appointed charles it's not complete so this object also require a complement to complete its sense the teacher appointed charles monitor so when the object is provided with a complement it makes sense the same thing happens for the last sentence as well frustration drove him object mad complement so it's complement it's object frustration drove him there's no sense drove him what mad the frustration drove whom him so there's the object him is the object and there's no confusion in it 
but the object is not complete. The object cannot make a sense all by itself. So it requires a complement, a support to complete its sense and there comes mad the complement to help the object to make sense, to complete their meaning and we call them object complement. Yes, dear friends, but remember, object complements are not related to the verb. These are not part of the intrinsity verb. Rather, they complete the sense of the object, not that of the verb. So that's all about our discussion from verbs of incomplete predications and complement and also subject complement and object complement. So if you want more clarifications about it, if you have any doubt, you may ask it in the comment section and obviously we would answer it in our next next presentation. So stay with us by subscribing our channel and we are returning very soon with another fresh discussion. Till then, bye bye. Happy learning.